Hi, and welcome to our first video in the series for cellular metabolism. If you're just joining us, please be aware that we have over, I've lost counts, over 90, or maybe over 100 at this point, of free videos on YouTube dedicated to anatomy and physiology, as well as other science topics. If you want to see even more, you can find more exclusive videos at mrfordsclass.net. So let's begin by taking a look at cellular metabolism. Now here's a big caveat. When you are in a anatomy physiology course, we have to get through some of this basic information, chemistry, cell metabolism, before we can get to things like the skeletal system or the muscular system. So we're not going to spend too much time on cell metabolism. However, there is a lot of material just on this topic alone. You can spend an entire semester learning about cell metabolism. So if you're in a biology class or a biochem course, this video will give you a general overview, but you'll have to go into this in much more depth in your class. So let's actually get into what we need to know for an anatomy class. We begin by taking a look at the fuel of the body. If you need to go and put fuel in your car, what kind of fuel are you going to use? Well, if you're like most people, you're going to go to a gas station and you're going to put gas in your car. The gas just doesn't sit in the gas tank. It has to do something. And so what winds up occurring is the gasoline is brought to the engine. You have little combustions, little explosions, which move internal components of the engine, which ultimately move your car. That's the gasoline. That's the energy source for your car. In the human body, we chew food, we bring in food. Ultimately, this food is going to have to be converted into an energy source. And this energy source is called ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Pay attention to that last word, triphosphate. Tri. If you are on a tricycle, how many wheels are on the bike? Three. If you see a triceratops at the museum, how many horns does it have? Three. So try three phosphates. This thing's going to have three phosphates. And the adenosine we'll take a look at in just a second. So we break this molecule down. The adenosine, the adenine, is a nitrogen-containing organic compound. The ribose is a simple sugar made of five carbons. And the triphosphate, like I just said, is a composition of three phosphates attached. So let's take a look at the image and you can see the model of the ATP. Notice once again that the three phosphates are attached at the end. The energy of the ATP is located at that last phosphate. That is where the energy is located at. And this semester I gave, uh, when I was talking about this in class, I was like, okay, where's the p -p -p power? I was kind of channeling Terry Crews out there. If you've never seen um, Terry, I'm sure you've seen him. He's been in a bunch of the old Spice commercials. He's been in Click. He was the voice of the officer in the newest um, Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs 2. Um, if you haven't seen him, just Google him. You can find his videos. And he does this P -p -p power with the Old Spice. Well, that's where the P -p -p power is located at. It's located at the last phosphate. So P phosphate, P for P -p -p power. Okay? We take off that last phosphate and that releases the energy. So that last phosphate, that third phosphate at the end, is where the energy hides. When we take that phosphate off, we then have a diphosphate, so adenosine diphosphate. We attach the phosphate, now we have invested the energy, that ATP now has the potential to release that energy again. So quick summary. The energy that we're talking about, that the body uses to function, is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. The energy itself is located at that last phosphate. You pop off that phosphate, you have a release of power. You attach that phosphate and you're storing power. Okay, in our next video, we're gonna take a look at some of the fundamentals behind respiration.